Tunsil will probably never forget, unfortunately, for all the wrong reasons. Tunsil fell to the Dolphins with the 13th pick in the draft, and a source tells ESPN he could have started his NFL career under stage one of the league's substance abuse program, but will not. This, of course, would have been because a two-year-old video of Tunsil smoking a bong was posted to his own Twitter account moments before the draft. We welcome Herm to the desk. Herm, how are we doing? I'm well, thank you. We want to get your thoughts on this. Has your opinion of Tunsil changed as this has played out now? No, not at all. And I think all the clubs did their homework. I just showed Skip. I'm, 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 I'm sad that Stephen A's not here. You know, when you write these players up a month before they get drafted, I write about 200 players up, watch tape on them. And, um, you know, I looked at the, and this is when he was going to, actually, I thought he was going to go to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's before all the, the, you know, the trades and all that took place. But what I wrote, you know, long frame, elite athlete, uh, very good feet, body control, quick punch, uh, quick twitch, uh, all those things, gets to the second level. Uh, and, but then at the end here, I wrote, uh, check on red flags. <laughs> I see a couple of red dots. I see a couple of red dots. Those are your red this flags. Was, this, was, this was a month ago. Before you Before the ball. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. and, and most clubs had the same thing. Check red flags, off the field concerns. And I think going forward, if you're Miami, and Mike Tadman Ball was on Mike and Mike mm -hmm. yesterday, um, they're gonna have a plan for him. And, and that, his career will depend on how he handles his idle time going forward. And the people he allows in his circle. And I think they gotta get to the bottom of the fact that who was trying to frame this guy. Uh, when we saw what happened in the draft. You, you better figure that one out, too, as well. But going forward, you know, the first guy I would have him hooked on to would be Brandon Albert, the kid we drafted in Kansas City, the left tackle. Mm. Uh, Brandon's been in the league a long time. He would be a good mentor for this young man. And I think Miami will do everything in their, uh, the, you know, uh, what they can do for this guy off the field to make sure he's in the right circles. And then from there, he's got to have a little business on the field. It's not the on the field. He's going to be a good player, whether they start him at guard and eventually goes to left tackle when Brandon retires. But I think the off-field concerns are something they're going to have to be uh, really, really aware, uh, well aware of and, and try to help him that way. Okay, so from what you've seen over the last 48 hours, mm -hmm. now that you've had time to digest and sit back, would you have taken him 13th? Oh, yeah, because if he's on my board yes. and I like him, he was probably higher than that, but I think a lot of the teams got nervous about the media hit they were about to take. Oh, yeah. They knew the they, look, they knew that this guy maybe socially had smoked some marijuana, mm -hmm. okay? He's not the only one, by the way, out of the 256 oh, guys got really? drafted. Okay, let's don't, let's yeah. don't, let's make that perfect clear. He's not the only one, yeah. okay? And, and so they probably had an idea, but when it showed up, there's a couple clubs, maybe the Giants were sitting there and going, hey, man, you know, we, we might draft this guy. That happened. I'm not saying the Giants did this, but they go, like, well, we can't do that now. Coming to New York, oh, we don't, we don't do that. And you know, it was reported that Baltimore had him. And, 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 and maybe, and maybe they, if it's close, no. like yeah. Stanley, if it's close, you go, you know what, we don't want that. Baltimore already had a big distraction. Didn't they? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, you don't want that going in on your first pick. Mm. Some club, now some, Miami sat there and said, we're good. Look, they had a situation in their locker room where the coach got fired, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, he mm -hmm. ran the coach out of there. Yeah. Uh, the, the players didn't want to come to practice, right? They dealt with that, and now they draft Tunsil. They feel like they got a new head coach, they got new people in the organization, that we got a plan for this guy, and we're going for him. So beyond the red flags, the media attention there too. Stephen Absolutely. A. Absolutely. I think the fact that the media attention is, serves as an impediment is an absolute joke. Right. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, first of all, Put on your big boy pants as a league, as a particular franchise, and move ahead. But more importantly, considering the popularity of the NFL and how no matter what, particularly in this day and age, people are going to go to the stadium, if for no other reason, those tailgate parties prior to the game, um, and not to mention the fact to watch the game. And they're certainly going to watch it on television. NFL is king right now. It's a religion. People literally scheduling, schedule their time going to church around yeah. football Sunday That's during the NFL season. So the fact is, is that if you know that in the, ult in, in the end, it's not going to affect your bottom line. For you to walk around and act like 
PR is such a concern that you don't want to sit up there and take a risk on the best player is ludicrous to me. Now, if you're concerned about him getting suspended and not being available because the best ability is availability, and you're concerned that he's not going to live up to that reality, that's an entirely different matter altogether. I certainly understand that. That's something that we can all comprehend. But there's no excuse under the sun uh, for, for uh, concerns about PR to, to serve as an impediment to you not grabbing a player. Now, if it was somebody, let's say, for example, Coach, uh, Laramie Tunsil yes. uh, was involved in domestic violence against a woman. Yeah, they're, they're, they're and you're the Baltimore yeah. Ravens. And you're the Baltimore Ravens. I understand that because of the whole Ray Wright situation. That's different. But we, come on now, that, 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 that to me doesn't make much sense. And then the other thing I want to get to is this. The substance abuse program, yeah, he's not in it, but we all know he's going to be closely monitored. Mm -hmm. We know that the NFL is going to watch him like a hawk because he exposed himself and he put himself in a position where it's guilt before innocence as opposed to what traditionally is supposed to be the American way, innocence until proven guilty. And so when you look at it from that perspective, I definitely think it's accurate to say he's going to be closely monitored. I have no problem with it. But since it's something that he did not engage in in his NFL career because it hasn't even started yet, I'm not going to sit up there and say that he should be a member of the substance abuse program for the National Football League. Stephen, yeah, you make some good points, and, and, and I'll just add to that. What you said is, is, is absolutely right, but it works both ways. It's the fact that can you trust him off the field? That, that There's a concern with that. We saw that with Randy Gregory. Okay, Randy Gregory came in the league, and people said, okay, and Dallas drafted him. Um, you know, I, I spoke with the, with the young man, and all of a sudden, he's going to miss games again. And so that yep. was a concern, as, as well as the media hit. You look at the Dallas Cowboys. Hardy's not back there. Okay? He's not back. And, and, and they said, and, 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 and Stephen Jones said, you know what? We're going to try to draft players uh, a, little, a little bit different here now. Because it, it, they, they both play together. You know, you got to deal with that part of it. You got to deal, is the player going to be available, as you just said? Yeah. Okay, I said on Friday, I really liked the way Laramie Tunzel stood up to, to all the fallout on draft night. He handled it well. I said he was sweating bullets, but he, <laughs> but he stood up and he owned what, what he had done, maybe to the detriment of his former university, but he owned it, and I liked it. Now, then we had a situation where before his first new session media conference in Miami, he had a quote-unquote allergic reaction. I, I don't know what it was. They didn't explain, but he was late to his first session, and my red flag flew again. And because of that, I, I'm going to stand my ground on this. I wouldn't have taken him 13th. Mm. I still think it's too high that he's too big of a red flag risk back to your, your note. And, and I'm going to remind everybody not to beat this to death, but look, Tunsil had three what, what I would consider major injuries mm -hmm. at Ole Miss. He had a broken leg, and he had a knee, and he had a biceps tendon. These are big deals. These aren't little deals. These are big deals. So I don't know. Will he always be available going forward? Will his, you know, oftentimes college history of injury and behavior will predict what's going to happen in the National Football League. Oftentimes it will. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes guys just magically just they stay healthy through their pro career, and sometimes they shape up and fly right in pro football, sometimes. But in this case, there was so much going on here with the seven games he missed for taking impermissible benefits. Right. The, the issue, he was, in, uh, according to Kim Dietschy, in the hotel room the night that Kim Dietschy fell through the window and then got arrested for marijuana possession. Just th These are just bad signs followed by some ongoing ugly feud with his stepfather right back and forth back and forth suing each other you know it, it's it, it's not a good sign for somebody you're going to invest even 13th pick money in going forward so i hope i'm wrong about this but i'm i'm going to predict that that there will be some issues because he already had an allergic reaction issue before his first Session with the media. Maybe he's allergic to the media. I don't know. But but in the end, I wouldn't blame him. Well, I I'll, I got it. But but in the end, it's just a lot well, of red flags. Like how many do well, you want before you say no? Well, let's put things in this proper perspective. This guy was considered the elite offensive lineman in the draft. Okay, by, by far. he was projected. 
Yeah. He was projected initially to go yeah. number one until the Tennessee Titans traded down so yeah, the L.A. Rams right. could get the number one overall yeah. pick, okay? Then there was speculation that he was going to go at number six and then ultimately number nine. Well, because he fell to 13, let's take the Miami Dolphins into consideration. According to the reports, they had him on their board originally at eight, and they would have taken him. But remember, they traded with the Eagles, ultimately ended up getting Kiko Alonso along with Byron Maxwell, not to mention the fact that they've got the number 13 overall pick. So taking Tunsil elevated their stature on the offensive line, provided elite protection for Ryan Tannehill, which is something they're clearly trying to do uh, moving forward. Not to mention the fact that by taking them 13th instead of 8th, they saved about $3.5 million. Okay? So when you look at it from that perspective, Skip, I mean, it's a plus. And if you're telling me that you don't take him with a top 10 pick because of these red flags. I get that. But outside of that, this is a guy that was projected to go number one. You got an opportunity to take him at 13. I must say, Mr. CIA himself, the man who is the absolute master at being long-winded and saying absolutely nothing by the name of Mike Tannenbaum, your friend, uh, Coach Coach Herm. <laughs> I mean, this dude should be working for the CIA. He says absolutely, positively nothing, even though he's talking to you. And at the end, you sit there and say, what did he say? Absolutely nothing. But. He did a good job here, and I got to give credit where credit is due. I just chatter because I like Mike Tannenbaum. Whenever we speak, we always exchange pleasantries. I genuinely <laughs> like him. He's just a master at saying absolutely nothing, nothing at all. But he did a good job with the draft, and I got I got to give him credit for that, Skip. I think he made the right decision. Okay, I, I got it. What did I say on Friday? Tunsil doesn't have just Pro Bowl ability to me. He has Hall, Hall of, of Fame, fame talent. No, no Again, it's potential Hall of Fame talent. But potential. I think you yeah. would agree. You had him going one to Tennessee. Oh, this yeah. is big time now. Well, yeah, and, and here again, uh, I think regardless of what a player uh, has done off the field or he's been injured, the process is you grade the player for what you see on tape. That's how you stack your board. From there, then, then the conversation starts. Is he worthy? Are we concerned about his off-field situation? Are we concerned about injuries? And if you are, you're going to put checks and balances by this young man's name and say, you know what, we're going to, we're going to grade him here, but we wouldn't take him until he got down to four or five. Okay? So that's how it works. And everyone, everyone's board's a little bit different. Some will say, obviously, Miles Jack. Some will say should have went in the first round. A lot of people say, you know what, no, nah, we don't know. Dallas Smith. Jalen Some Smith. people say, yeah. you know what? We're not even going, we don't even want to deal with him. No. Dallas drafted him. So mm -hmm. everyone's bored. They, they, you rank the player by his ability to play football. Dallas's surgeon did his surgery. Okay, so and then you're everything saying we, else. We got the inside. That's right. And then everything else kind of yeah. takes place after that. That's how it works. High risk, high reward, but I hope it works out for him. I, I do hope too. he has a long, a long, wonderful career. Coach, you will be back with us in yeah, just perfect. a bit. Thank you. After the break, it was a crazy ending in San Antonio last night. Did the Spurs get robbed? Mm. That discussion is next. Got some old legs with the Spurs. <laughs>